Jonah chapter 3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. All right, so let's look at what's, what's happened. Jonah's been through a big ordeal. All right, in chapter 1, he's told, go to Nineveh and preach. Look at chapter 1. Verse 2. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose and fled to Tarshish, the other side of the world. Now Tarshish, they believe, is Spain. Or in that area. That's the very end of the world as far as what we're looking at the people in the known world. And then there's this big storm. Jonah's asleep. And we've seen all where him and Jesus met. They wake him up and say, listen, why ain't you praying to your God? They drew stars, picked the black ball, whatever it is, and it falls in Jonah's hand. Okay, who are you, buddy? What are you? Well, I'm a Hebrew. I fear God. And this is all because of me, because God told me to go the other direction. And they know this because Jonah told them. And Jonah had paid his fare, and I wonder if it was 30 pieces of silver. So he said, okay, you guys want to throw me overboard, and they work, and they work, and they work, and work. They don't listen to God. Finally, they come to their last straw and say, God, forgive us. We don't want to be charged with homicide. We don't want to be charged with, with uh, murder. But alley-oop, there goes Jonah in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. And God prepared a fish. That fish, Jesus said, is a whale. Jonah, before that whale, or inside that whale, <clears throat> Jonah died. People don't believe that. Jonah is in the belly of the whale, but his soul is in hell. People don't believe that. We last left off that he's praying to hell, he's talking in hell, like the rich man was in hell. Talking. Memory. By the mercy of God, God gave Jonah a resurrection. That fish, that whale, vomited Jonah on dry land. Now, that's a feat, because that whale had to beach himself for Jonah to be not on the ocean, not on the shore, but on dry land. There's a big difference of being on the shore, being out in the water, or being on, on the beach or the sand or dry land. Jesus said that Jonah was a prophet, Jonah was a real man, and as Jonah is the sign, he'd be three days and three nights in the whale's belly, shows how the Son of Man be three days and three nights. In the heart of the earth, both men went into hell. Both men did not stay in hell. The only two men that went into hell came out of hell. Now don't go believing all these stories. Oh, I died, I saw hell. No, no. Angel of light, the devil transformed. He could fool you. I seen a video, or I saw the title of a video. Oh, this 14-year-old girl goes to heaven and sees it all. I'm like, the Apostle Paul went to heaven. He said, I can't tell you. I can't even tell if it was me. And the only man, the only two men that, that did not die was Enoch and Elijah. And only three men that followed Jesus in his true up close ministry was Peter, James, and John. Always well, seems to be, you know, the Two or three. Right now, I need one. In my ministry. I feel the world and the Christians are up against me, and I'm I'm fighting a battle. So Jonah has been spit out. Chapter three. While he's on that on, on the beach on the dry ground, God says, "Jonah." He doesn't even let Jonah answer. Arise, verse two, chapter three. Go. That word should be. It didn't say come. 
the church, temple, said, go. They're not going to come to you. you got to go to them. I've heard many people, you know, I'm preaching on the street. They, they keep it in the church house. No. Because you won't be in the church house. So I'll bring it here to you. Even today, weddings and funerals are not being held in the church no longer. And panty waist freak lily pad preachers don't have the guts to preach the gospel at the ceremonies anymore. They don't want to offend anybody. Arise. Get up, Jonah. Go into Nineveh. Now, Nineveh is a wild, wicked city. My Bible has pictures in it. And they have a, a picture here that the Assyrians actually had a portray of battle. And how they abused the captives. And it's only got this little square. They drew on their tablets. This is how we mistreated the people we fought. They were vicious. They were wicked. They would make America look like Girl Scouts. We'll be going the way of Sodom. We'll be going the way of Nineveh and Babylon. We're on our way there. We ain't there yet. Great city. That's one of those great... And preach! Preach! Go to all the world and preach! You got it? Because Baptists don't get it. I let my light shine. I bite in the church. I gave them the four spiritual laws. Did you give them Christ? Suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Oh, I said, come Sunday. And what are you going to get for that lost man? He comes Sunday. He's going to get how great America is on America's birthday. Where last week, how terrible America is for aborting babies. And how wonderful that the Supreme Court is so much authority, so much needs to be praised in God the Father. All hail the Supreme Court for moving Roe versus Ray, or whatever it's called. The devil may distract your visitor to come in when they're not going to talk about. They may have the time. Well, you know, here's his message. I don't usually preach this, <laughs> but we're going to preach about, oh, okay, my, my parents have finally come to church. My brothers have finally come to church. <laughs> hey, we're going to preach about tithing and giving. Ah. Uh. And then they're going to walk away. All they talk about is giving and tithing. Giving and tithing. What would you tell them? Oh, let my light shine. Do they even know you're a Christian? They know I go to church. Uh, Catholic church. Protestant. Uh, Reformation. Uh, Je Jehovah Witness Hall. Uh, uh, whatever the Muslims call their mosque. Uh, temple. Uh, Synagogue, uh, uh, Baptist, Southern Baptist, Reformed Baptist, Old Fashioned Baptist, Methodist. This church, we don't allow women preachers. This church, we vote in women preachers. Blah, blah, blah. Which one? They're not all Christian. Which light? I mean, some got neon flashing. Ooh. They got a, they got a word today. We had a worship service. Well, that music was worshiping the devil, not God. Preach unto it. The preaching that I bid thee. What is the preaching that Jesus told the Christians? The gospel. Jonah, you better get in there. You better preach what I tell you to preach. 
I'm going to go and I'm going to tell them to come to temple. I don't want them in temple. They're not Jewish. And plus, for the Christian come to church, you don't even know what the church is. You can't invite them to church if they don't believe in Jesus. But what, what Baptists know today, nothing. So Jonah arose and went into Nineveh, finally, according to the word of the Lord. So in jo Jonah's rebellion, we learn about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not that Jesus suffered for his sin, but he suffered for the sins of all mankind. Including Jonah. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city. There's that great again. Three days journey. And Jonah began to enter the city in day's journey. And there's all kinds of things about the three days and this day journey. You know, it took three days. It took three days to walk from one side of Nineveh to the other side of Nineveh. It took three days to walk around Nineveh. But it took Jonah one day. I would believe, and we'll have to, Lord willing, tomorrow night too. I would believe that the attitude of Jonah was, he did it in three days. It was, I mean, one day. He, it should have been a three-day journey, but he did it. I want to get this done. I want to get this over with. And you forget the fact is that Elijah tells Ahab, you better hurry up, get on your horses, get back to your pals, because it's going to rain. It's going to rain hard. And the Bible says that Elijah, or Elijah, I forget either one, outran the king. Here's the king of his horses. Phew, what was that? You mean, that was Elijah. You forgot about that, didn't you? It could be the very fact is Jonah, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to do, now listen, I don't want to do what I'm going to do. Have you ever had a job? You're given a job, you're given something. If I just hurry up, stop complaining, just hurry up and do it and get it done, it'll be done. That's going to be my first priority today. I'm going to get that job done. I think that's what Jonah's problem is. And he cried. Loud. That doesn't mean, that mean boo-hoo-hoo-hoo. He lift up his voice. Like you're supposed to. Now get the fact is Jonah did not run into any temple. Jonah did not run into any synagogue. Jonah sure didn't run into any church. Jonah didn't run into any building. Jonah became a street preacher. You're turning people away. I'll show you about turning people away. He walked in there. Okay, you ready? He yells out, Yet forty days, none of us shall be overthrown. That's his message. Nine words. He didn't say anything about repent. He didn't say anything about going to church. He said, you know what? Forty days... God's going to destroy you guys. And he walks off. He's like, do it, God. Listen, the Gentiles are an enemy to Jonah. Like Peter, there's a prejudice. In you, you dogs. They looked at the Gentiles as you, you filthy. Ugh. Even if you took a bath, you stink. Get out of my way. And remember, Assyria, which is, Nineveh is not the capital of Syria yet, but the Assyrians are an enemy of the Jews. When Israel goes into captivity, God uses Assyria. The very people that Jonah is preaching, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I hope that was the exact message that God gave him. Nine words. That's his message. 
That's a nine-word message. Every Baptist would love that message on a Sunday morning. And it's true. And it's factual. And go back to chapter 1. Verse 2. Cry, there he goes, against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. So he cried. Yet 40 days, 40 is a number of testing in the Bible. It usually is 40 days and 40 nights. That would be Elijah. That would be Moses. That would be Jesus. Nineveh shall be overthrown the city. There's the message. He turned people away. Smells like whale vomit. What's that Jew saying over there? What's he doing screaming? Go home. Go to your Jew. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to hear it. I'm just telling you what people tell me when I street preach. And the complete opposite of what Americans... America wants a revival. America wants what we're going to read in chapter 3. About what not happens in chapter 3, America wants the revival. The churches, we're praying for revival while we hold on to Esther. There he goes. He hasn't said that in a while. And we hang on to Tammuz, December 25th. He hasn't said that in a while. Oh, the people that come only two times a year to church service. Oh, praise them, praise them. We you stand up and, oh, okay, all those that came twice a year, yay. Give them a palm leaf. Give them, uh, give them lilies. Give them a tool set. Give them some flowers. Give them a cup. Give them a departing. Ushers, will you tell what our departing guests will get for coming to church today? Yes, Pastor. Anybody who's come to church for the very first time today will get himself a cup with our church's name on it, with the pastor's name bigger than the church, with a phone number, so you can have a cup and drink your coffee with a little touch of Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm sick of Christians. I'm sick of the churches. They're the ones that are giving me a bad attitude. They want the revival, but they don't want... Look what happened here. Nine-word message. So the people of Nineveh believe God. You don't even have the Baptist church believe in God. They don't even believe in one Bible. They don't even believe their music is wrong. They don't even believe their fellowship is wrong. They don't even believe they're wrong. They believe God. Well, where do they believe in God? In 40 days, we're going to be overthrown. They believed in judgment. Six years, I've been at the farmer's market. I've been telling them, hell's coming, death's coming. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. The gospel. Be saved. The people then come running, believing. Now, there have probably been some. You know, they go, oh, they're turning people away. Jonah didn't turn anybody away. Jonah tried to turn them away. Well, let's get that fact right there. Jonah didn't comb his hair, wipe off his veil, vomit. He walked in there smelling, stinking. That guy's gonna destroy you. And that's short version of what he got, what he said. I want to get this over with. And we'll see in a moment. He goes in there and preaches, then he leaves. So that's the next chapter. The people heard Jonah. Can you remark on what Jonah was like? He began to decay from the juices of the whale's stomach. The Bible said that he had seaweed wrapped around his head. 
If he was in America, he would have Oh, look, a zombie. Oh, a zombie apocalypse. They got zombie apocalypse stores in Orlando, Florida to prepare you for the zombies. Listen, we're not coming back as zombies. We're going back to Jesus. Okay? Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That is the word of God. Jonah didn't mention God, did he? Look, 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 look. Look at the message. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. They believe God. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit working. That's the fact is they looked at that man. They knew that man was a Jew. They knew what the Hebrew God. They knew about the Lord Jehovah. And they knew about the prophets. Jesus said that Jonah was a prophet. We've already read, I forget, First and Second Kings. I forget that Jonah has already prophesied. There he is. He's in our city. And he preaches nine words. He's preaching God. We believe God. Why don't we have a revival in America? Because the Baptist churches don't believe God. What about the Southern Baptist? I forget what the C is now. Council, whatever. I think. The Southern Baptist Church. The Bible says you're not to ordain. Women are not to serve the authority of the men. And Warren and his church are in the Southern Baptist Convention. There it is. With women in the ministry as pastors. Well, they're not really pastors. They're, they're associate, associate pastors. Yeah. And when you eat the fruit thereof, I mean, you'll be as gods, you know, of good and evil. Okay? You're not going to get a revival when the, when the Christians don't believe. Now, we're talking about a bunch of heathen. I preach to the heathen. I know street preachers. I watched a video today of England at, a, at one of these gay parades. They didn't believe. They tried to outshout the preacher and proclaim the fast. I don't have not heard in many, 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 many years of a Christian. Um, maybe, hopefully, maybe they do it in secret. Amen. Glory to God. God will re reward them what they do in secret openly. But I haven't heard out a pulpit of fast. We need to get down in prayer. We need to come to an altar and pray for. But I haven't heard anything about a fast. We can't, we can't have a fast in the Baptist because we're going to go to the chicken house. We're going to go to the steakhouse. We're going to eat after we come out of the church. And midweek, we're going to have a midweek fellowship. We're going to have a Friday fellowship. We're going to have, you know, breakfast and fellowship. And we're going to have lunch and, and a restaurant fellowship. We're going to have fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. We don't have time to fast. This is the heathen. This is not God's people. They believe the God Jehovah. And the people said, we better cut out eating. And put on sackcloth. And that, that is a wretched clothing. Oh, it gets you itching. When you're fasting and now you're in sackcloth, you are very, very very serious dealing with God. From the greatest of them even to the least. From the very richest, most noble to the bum. I don't know they had bridges, but under the bridge. The homeless man inside the street. The leper begging. There is a call for the people not of God. Plainly, truly, not 
of God. That hasn't happened in America. That hasn't happened in the church. Now there may be Christians who do fast and they're doing it secretly, quietly, like the scriptures say, Amen. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh. Uh oh. We have no king in America. We don't want to have anything to do with England. I'm sorry, you can't be a biblical nation. All of it is all kings, and God's nation, Israel, were under kings. The only presidents were those that were against the Jews in Daniel of Babylon. Because so you don't know your Bible. Too. He arose from his, knows all the arose arising. He arose from his throne. And laid his robe from him. And nobody touched that robe. But the king. And the king's suitor, whoever dressed him. There's only one person who would have grabbed that robe from the, from the closet, from the clothes hangers, if they had them back then. And the king would put his arms out and... Only one person would put that robe on. Only one person was in charge of cleaning that robe. If that king only had one person in charge of his cup. He is taking off his robe. You know Jesus Christ left the throne. And when he's standing before the Roman soldiers, they took off the robe. They put a perfect robe, the purple robe on him, the scarlet robe. You know, the movie, the robe. That wasn't Jesus' clothing. That was what the Romans put to mock him in a Roman Catholic movie. Then they took off the robe of scarlet and purple and put his own clothing on him. But when he was on that cross, he was naked as naked could be. And covered him with sackcloth. And sat in ashes. The royal of all royal, the government of all government in Nineveh, has laid aside his royal clothing. And has put on itchy. sackcloth and is sitting in burnt ashes as Job did without the boil as his people are doing because they're repenting they are sorry they believe the nine word message of the preacher You can work, walk out of church Sunday morning and forget what the preacher preached by Sunday afternoon. No value. <clears throat> you can have people walk out of the church house. <clears throat> well, well. Light up the cigarette. Go buy their lottery ticket. All right, dear, you take the children home. I'll see you Wednesday or Thursday, I'll be home and I'll be home. Get the little brats away from me, will ya? Why don't you shut up? Listen, I, I'm a street preacher. Even Christians will walk up to me. Hey, you're turning people away. I let my light shine. I wish you shut up. Plain simple. They say other words. They don't want to offend me. <laughs> Judge not least he be judged. Well, <laughs> you're judging me now. We can play. Judge not least he be judged. Well, you judge not least he be judged. 
You can that means you judge that. We can play that back and forth. Frank, when I'm telling you, Christians don't even repent. And those are the same Christians will go to their church on Sunday. Oh, pray for peace, pray for love, pray for revival. Bible says we're to honor our government. It's Biden's fault we got more gasoline. Oh, gasoline's so hot. It's Biden's fault. Oh, stupid Biden. And Biden this. And Biden that. Oh, he's not my president. He stole the votes. And Biden this. And Nancy Pelosi that. And the Democrats. And the witches. And the mean, nasty Democrats. I haven't heard you say that the gas price is coming down. Thank you, Biden. Gas price is coming down. I can't afford the gas bike in the in this grocery store. They don't got nothing in the grocery store. Can't buy toilet paper. And all the grocery prices are going up. But I can buy a whole bunch of fireworks. So I can blow them off all, all weekend long. I can buy a whole dog intoxicating liquor and then light fireworks off. And blow my fingers off. And the government's got to pay for me to go to the hospital. I thought you were talking about Christians. I am talking about Christians. You don't think they drink? I know a pastor. We went visitation. You see, the devil tried to stop me. We went visit. I think it was one of my very first visitation, or second one. One of the first three or four. We went over to this guy's house. He said, we're going to this guy's house. He hasn't been in church for a while. I want to find out what's going on with him. Like, wow, okay, this is great. This guy hasn't been in church and the pastor cared. We put our Bibles down on the television. I, I remember this clear. And the guy said, hey, you know, I got some Bob Dylan records. And they sat there listening to Bob Dylan records. If you don't know, Bob Dylan's rock and roll and all that. Yes, Christians sin as much as the world does. But they want the revival. You'd be surprised what some of those Christians are doing when they're in their own private life. When they take off their pastor uniform. Anyway, pastors don't even wear uniforms today. They wear when the, the deacons, they don't wear, you know, they, they wear shorts to church. And their wives practice Catholicism. And they don't know anything in the Bible. They don't even carry the right Bible. You'll be quite shocked to know what they do outside of church service. You know, the Bible says that the devil transforms in 2 Corinthians. That's what Christians do. When they walk through that door of the church, transformers, be holy before their eyes. And the service is over. And they, and, and they walk through that door again. Transformers, I'm back in the work world tonight. I mean, if you ever watch the Transformer cartoons, well, you guys, I'm discussing with Christians today. You know, Dr. Peter S. Ruckman said, if I knew what Christians were like before I got saved, I would have never gotten saved. I understand exactly what that man meant. I believe what he says too. You know, I'm a soldier with, with the armor. I'm preaching. I'm, I'm scolding. I'm if you check out all the sores in my back, in my butt, from Christians who backstab me and talk about me and don't like what I do, what I do biblically, and I cheated on my wife and my wife cheated on me and everything and all the nonsense and, oh, he, he, he. He married a divorced woman and all that, and blah, 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 blah. I, I had a pastor tell me that another pastor said, I was involved in some deep, gross, unmentionable sin that he wasn't even going to tell me. I said, that's not true. And he said, I know it's not true. And that pastor of that church, who has to have a cough drop, allows that, that now evangelist that travels around, allows that family in his church 
Well, he's bad mouthing another Christian. While they sing karaoke. Seems to be something they do down here, South. Karaoke. Pop the CD in and just lip sync. Jesus loves me, I don't care. Trying to make my fluffy hair. Everybody's going to clap and applaud. Let's get back to where I'm going way off. I, I, I've been in attitude all day today. In verse 7, he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh. This is a wicked, vile, Gentile city. You got it? This city would be like New York, L.A., Orlando, Miami, Chicago, London maybe. Okay? Maybe some of your cities in the Middle East. They're just rugged. They're wicked. Notice that decree. Ever knows that word of decree like decrees in the book of Daniel? Here's a royal decree of the king and his nobles. The people that are under the authority of the king are in agreement with the king. We can't, oh here he goes again, we can't even get the Democrats and Republicans to agree with each other and agree with the president and agree with the Republicans uh, of the House and agree with the Senate, blah, 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 blah. Don't expect a revival. Here's a revival and the government has gotten together with the king and here's a decree. Saying. Now remember the people have already are wearing sackcloth. They're already fasting. They're already mourning. They're already praying. They're already seeking God. It has gotten to the royal chambers. I don't know what they called it. Now all the royalty is doing it. The king is not wearing his robe. Here's the decree. Here's the law. Now think about this law if you were America. Or a Christian America. That neither man nor beast. Animals. Herd or flock. Sheep, goats. Cows, taste anything, let them not feed nor drink water. He's saying the whales. You can kill a baby, that's okay, but if you kill an animal, well, we're going to put you in jail and electrocute you. How dare you, King? You're going to hurt the animals. What about the poor animals? That's what the American Christians, that's what the American government would say to, the, to this king. We can't harm. The king is so afraid of God. He said, not even the animal. No water, no food. <laughs> that tells you what a fast is. And every man. Now, I would assume that when we started this, the people, I would assume some people hasn't done it. Okay, some are, some aren't. Okay, the king says, neither man. That means everybody. That means if you're not in sackcloth right now, you better change. If you're going to have your ham, which they were allowed to, they're Gentiles. Oh, no, you're not. I always picture, can you imagine? Now, I don't think they had to think like that. You know, if you ever get, you're in a hospital, you're NPO, you can't have any food after midnight. Ah, oh, man, it's like, oh. that's when you get hungry. That's when you wake up like, oh, I had one minute. And the nurses are very sure, no, 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 no. We can give you one of those swabs. Yeah, I'll give you a swab. You imagine that person, he can't eat after midnight. He has his surgery, and he, he and he's going back to his room. My mind really weird. And he's like, oh, Doc, can I eat? He goes, yes, you can eat. 
And he goes, and he calls up the nurse, he goes, but where's the food? Oh, there is no food. What do you mean? Oh, the proclamation of the king is we're all under effect. No food, no water. <laughs> well, I, I haven't done it since midnight. That's okay, the king said. Can you, like, slip me something under? Nope. Because if I do, God's going to get it. What do you think the Christians in America would do? I was in the church, and we had weekly church fast fast. Sunday, he would say, all right, we're, as if we're going to fast, and we're going to fast all week. That means Sunday to Saturday. That's all week. And on Friday, we're going to have a fellowship at this restaurant. Yes, finally. Pastor, that's not all week. Well, that's okay. There goes Stiley already, causing trouble. A young Christian. I began causing trouble the day I got saved. The orders of the king is no water, no food. Including your animals. Have you ever had a dog or cat? I have a cat when you haven't fed him or gave him anything to drink. He's going to bug you. Every time you get up and head for that kitchen, he's going to bug you. And he won't let you sleep. But, well, watch this. But let man, that means all man, and beast, be covered with, even the beast covered with sackcloth. Can you imagine if you were a stranger going in Nineveh? What on earth is this? I bet you they had at the gates of Nineveh. You can't come in this city unless you haven't eaten, and there's your sackcloth. I guarantee it. Well, why? God's going to destroy this place. And cry mightily unto God, capital G. Look at Jonah's nine-word message. Yet forty days, and then a book shall be overthrown. Look at the response. You're not going to get this in your Baptist church to get your Baptist revival. No way. Because you have to give up your sins as a Christian. And the church itself with the pastor and the deacon, they're involved in sins that you're not going to get rid of. Because we're going to defend them, we're going to do them because we're going to do them. So I've been told by many pastors. Because watch. So let man and beast be covered with, with sacrifice. Cry mildly unto the Let the animals, when the animals don't have food, they don't have water, when they moo and meow and rough and bad, let it be to God. Well, not getting no food. Bad. Now that is a revival. Not only that, not only that. Let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that's in their hands. Look at the repentance. There will be no Esther. And she was in Nineveh. There will be no Tammuz. And Tammuz came out of Babylon. There will be no adultery, no fornication, like the Southern Baptist Convention. You're not going to be able to drink water and alcohol and wine. You're not going to have that rough house party. You are going to repent of your sins, they say evil way. And the violent. They were a violent people. And the king just acknowledged it. 
and their writings on, on their tablets and their walls said they were. That's a revival. Did you, read, did you read about the revivals of the kings of Judah? They went and they, they cleaned the house of the Lord. They cleaned all the crap out. They got rid of all the gods. They got rid of all the altars. They got rid of all the scum. Only the people sacrificed in the high places. Man, if you did that in the Baptist church today, Monday morning the garbage men would have a lot of work to do. Because you have to get your Christmas tree out of the attic. You got to get the eggs out of the, out of the cupboard. You got to get rid of leaven. I'm not talking about leaven for the bread. You got to de church some people and their sinful way. Well, we can't do that. He's, uh, yeah, okay. I know you can't do that. So stop paying for a revival. We're not done yet. <laughs> uh, again, again, again. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's the message. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from the Spirit's anger that we perish not? Look at the message. Jonah gave and look how they took the message. That the Holy Spirit is working with these people. And God, we want mercy and grace. And if we will turn from our sins, look at verse 8, turn everyone from the evil way, if God will return, uh, uh, turn, and from the violence, if God will repent. They understood that their sins made God angry. What are you going to do with this pride month? Marching around and everybody selling pride and Oreo cookies has pride and the ice cream has pride and this company has pride. We're all involved in pride and, and the rainbow flag and let them march. and let, That's not showing you're sorry for your sins. And friend, there are denominational and non-denominational churches that are involved in that, and probably Baptist somewhere too. That we perish not. Now, come on, come on. Do you see John chapter 3? No, I don't. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish will have everlasting life. John will go on to say, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath, fierce anger, of God. I bet you somewhere in the minds of Nineveh, oh boy, I think we heard stories about Sodom and Gomorrah. Hey, if Sodom and Gomorrah is brought up in America and England in 2022, I guarantee, uh, what is it about 750 B.C., I guarantee Sodom and Gomorrah were also on the tips of their tongue. Okay? God saw their work. We're not saved by works. So don't go run to this passage for the church age. That they turn from their evil way. God repented of the evil. And he said that he would do unto them. Okay, watch, 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 watch. And yet 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. And he did it. All right, cancel the 40 days. I'm not going to destroy it. Now, you see where it says God saw their work? 
You know, you're going to see some of those Ninevites in heaven. Two places. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. This is where, this is where Jesus kicks them in the pants. The Jew. Watch what Jesus said. Two places. All right, 1240. 1239. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a son. So what example we're going to give an evil adulterous generation? And there would be no sign given it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Oh, okay, so how bad was Nineveh? As bad as the Jews are now in Jesus' time. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, that's already happened, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And the men of judgment and the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation. The generation he's talking to right now shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. Nine nine words. How many words have Jesus given them? Behold, a greater than Jonas, that's Jesus, is here. God said, at the judgment of these Jews, at the great white throne judgment, they're going to stand up and say, men of Nineveh, step up over here. You want to kindly tell these people what, what happened? Oh yeah, this man came in here, smelled like well bond. Woo -woo. Yeah, there he is over there, the angry one. And he said, what, what was it, yet 40 days and then nine words. And we all repented, we got rid of even our cows and our dogs. I have to say, dogs are the Jews. Dogs are unclean. Okay? You know, when Jesus spoke about the, what, the Gentiles, that angered the Jews. Now, would you say they're saved? Revelation 20. Revelation 20. We'll be going back to Jonah in a moment. Verse 12. I saw the dead. Are the Ninevites dead? They're dead. Small and great. Did you recognize that? Don't change the words of the Bible. Stand before God and the books are open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their work. And the sea gave up the dead which were them, and death and hell to the dead that were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Go back to Jonah. Three. Verse 10. With Revelation 20, God saw their works and that they turned from their evil way. God repented the evil that he said he would do unto them, and he did it. There are some Ninevites, they're not going to hell. They're going to go in to the eternal life. Because they repented. Now, not church age. They repented at the word of God. And they showed God they meant it. God said, okay. Now, every Ninevite, I don't believe any. And then to top it off, God's going to call those Ninevites that are right. Their name is in the book. Preachers don't believe me on that one. They don't believe that there's some names in, in that book. They're, they're going into heaven. The names that are in the book, you're going to say, come back up here. You, you repented at the preaching of Jonas King? Yes, sir. All my people. And all the people that did it with the right heart are going to be in the in the book of life. All right, well, you Ninevites, those that are saved, are going to go into the eternal life and get the new heavens. Will you kindly explain to the Jewish people here in my time what you did? 
And every scholar that goes off into the lake of fire who did not believe in Jonah, uh, Ninevites, you want to step up up here, please? You want to tell the scholarly dimwit how wrong Jonah was? The seamen that were on that ship that got saved. You guys want to tell these Baptist preachers how wrong Jonah's story was? Those Baptist preachers, those scholars and all that. You want to tell me, Jesus? I'm a liar? Well, how can we call Jesus a liar? Matthew 12. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. Here we go. I've been laying this egg. Now it's going to explode. Matthew 12. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. There, there are Christians, there are Baptist preachers, there are all kinds of classes of people that don't believe Jonah... And they're calling Jesus a liar. I don't think you're going to go to heaven. I don't think. I could be wrong. I don't think you're going to go to heaven if you just call Jesus a liar. Because you know who the liar is. It's the devil. And all those people that said that Jonah was a fake. Jonah was a fable. Jonah was a parable. Now, one last place. Jonah. We'll be back here, but I want to show you this. Jonah got his national revival. Didn't he? One whole city got right. Okay? Jonah. Verse chapter 4. But it displeased Jonah to see and he was very angry. We'll leave it right there. An entire city, most of the entire, they all didn't get saved. Let's get reality here. When the when the flames of fire and the brimstone did not fall from heaven, we'll read, we'll, we'll study this thing now. Jonah is angry. You know, I bet if we did have that American wide revival, if we did have that worldwide revival, if the Christian Baptist churches had to revive, I believe the pastors would get upset. Why? It wasn't my church. It wasn't my people. The little well unknown names of Whitfield, Moody, Jones, Sunday, Wesley, are the ones that God used. I bet you there were all kinds of preachers. All, we got to use us. 